So right over here we have graph, we have a gra we have the graph of the function y is equal to x to the three halves power. And what I want to do is find the arc length of this curve between from when x equals zero to when x is equal to, and I'm going to pick a, a strange number here, and I picked the strange number because it makes the numbers work out very well, to x is equal to 32 over 9. 32 over 9 is, let's see, that's a, That's a three and three and five ninths. So it's going to be right around, so if that's three and a half, so it's going to be a little bit past three and a half. So it's going to be like right over there. So we want to find, we want to find this, this arc length right over here, this thing that I have depicted in yellow. So it's from zero to 32 over nine. And I encourage you to pause the video and try this out on your own. So I'm assuming you've had a go at it. And if at any point while I'm working through it, you feel inspired, always feel free to pause the video and continue working with it. So let's just apply the arc length formula that we got kind of a, 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 a conceptual proof for in the previous video. So we know that the arc length, let me write this, the arc length is going to be equal to the definite integral from zero to 32, over nine of the square root, actually let me, let me just write it in general terms first so that you can kind of see the formula and then how we apply it. So it's the square root of one plus f prime of x squared dx. And in this case, that's going to be, it's going to be the definite integral from zero to 32 over nine of, I should say, the square root of one plus, now what's the derivative? If f of x, if f of x is x to the three halves, then f prime of x is going to be three halves x to the one half. And we picked this, this particular function because it's, it simplifies quite well when we put it under the radical. It's, it's fairly straightforward to find the antiderivative. So we've done a lot of engineering of this problem to make the numbers work out well. But let's just go through it. So this is f prime of x. f prime of x squared is going to be this quantity squared. It's going to be nine over four. x to the one half squared is x. So one plus nine fourths x dx. And so now we just have a definite integral that we have, we know how to solve this type of thing. And you might be able to even do this in your head, essentially do the u substitution. Say, okay, I have one plus nine fourths x, its derivative is nine fourths. I can kind of engineer that if I want, but instead I'm just going to do straight up u, u substitution. So u substitution, so if I say u is equal to one plus nine over four x, and then we know, let's see, du dx would be du dx is going to be equal to nine fourths. Or we could say du is equal to nine fourths dx. Or we could say dx, or we could say, let me scroll down a little bit. We could say dx is equal to, I'm just going to multiply both, times, both sides times four ninths, is equal to four ninths du. And then we just have to change the bounds of integration when x is equal to, when x is equal to zero, then u is going to be equal to, nine fourths times zero is just zero, so u is going to be equal to one. And when x is equal to 32 over nine, 32 over nine, and this is why that number was picked, what's u going to be equal to? 32 over nine times nine fourths is going to be 32 over four, which is going to be eight plus one. So that worked out very nicely, imagine that. So there we have it. So this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to the definite integral. Actually, let me make it clear. This is what is equal to this. The definite integral from u is equal to, u is equal to one to u is equal to nine. I'm going to make it very explicit that I'm dealing with u now. Of the square root of u, instead of dx, we have dx is four ninths du. Let me do it this way. Square root, whoops, that's not the right color. Square root of u, instead of dx, we have times four ninths du. And I'm just going to take the four ninths and stick it out here. Four ninths du. And we know how to 
we know how to apply the fundamental or the, I guess, the second fundamental theorem of calculus here to, to evaluate this definite integral. This is going to be 4 ninths times the antiderivative of u of the square root of u, which is the same thing as u to the 1 half, is going to be u to the 3 halves. And then we divide by 3 halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. And we're going to evaluate that at u equals 9 and u is equal to 1. And so we're in the home stretch here. This is going to be equal to 4 ninths times, times, let's see, 2 thirds times 9 to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 half. So 9 to the 3 halves, that is, let's see, the square root of 9 is 3 to the third power is 27. And this, of course, is 1. So we are left with 2 thirds of, actually, let's just factor out the 2 thirds. That makes it easier. So we're going to be left with, this is going to be equal to 2 thirds times 4 ninths is, is equal to 8 over 27. I've just factored out the 2 thirds. And then we're going to have 27 minus 1 inside, I guess you could say, the, br the brackets now. So 27 minus 1 is just going to be 26. It's going to be 26 times 26. And we could obviously, we could simplify this more if we want. We could do whatever 8 times 26 is. So actually, let's just, let's just figure that out just for fun. So 8 times 26 is going to be, so this is going to be 160 plus 8 times 6 is 48. So it's 208, 208 over 27. And we are, and we are done.